because I thought we might do the Lord's Prayer. You know, sometimes I come up with some really great ideas, but it's usually about three minutes before service starts. And when I do that, my next thought is, we can't make a slide. Lori's pretty good about making slides on the fly. But the reason that we did that is because it was on the slides for Thursday night and recovery. And, you know, it's worth coming over here just to hear Mark, the guy from Coatesbury, give him, bring a message. And, and so he kind of struck me with what he was saying. And he's doing a two-night message on the Lord's Prayer. And, of course, what he was talking about was the very first first slide on the Lord's Prayer. Lord, can you pull that up? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And when you think about that, most of the time, we're thinking about God doing stuff for us to make our world a little bit more like heaven, but it's really about how we live our lives that God's will is done here on earth. And then Manny was, had our, our song, Jesus I Come, and I got to process in that in my head about how many times do we say, Jesus, I come to you, and how many times do we say, Jesus, come to me? That I'm, I'm pretty comfortable where I am right now, and, and I'd rather not move, but I would like to have some stuff going on in my life. And so, can you please come and do that instead of what we would see with Jesus' disciples? that they would be the ones that are expected to go. Jesus says, come and listen to me, but then go and do my will, do my work. And so it's kind of a, maybe it's just in the preacher's head rather than around. But, but, but there's a difference there. Mark was also talking about sometimes in our, uh, in our churches, especially the ones that you see on TV, A lot of times the preaching is that if you're faithful to God, God will be faithful to you, and if you give to him, he's going to give back to you. And so we've always seen that with, with on, on TV with the, with the people that are talking about money a lot and, and, and fiscal rewards and, and riches, and, and, and if you tithe, God's going to be good to you. And the more you give him, the more he's going to give you. And if we're praying like that, what are we really wanting? Are we wanting good things for God? Are we wanting good things for us? Now this message that, that we're looking at is a continuation of last week, and also next week we'll be looking at the last part of the chapter of uh, uh, John chapter 6. But today we're going to look at this and, and see if they've got it right, because remember last week, we were talking about the feeding of the 5,000 and everybody really enjoying that meal and then following Jesus around and, and him saying, you're not coming because of me. You're coming because you got your stomachs full the last time. You're coming because you want something physical in your stomach. You're coming because you want me to feed you again. And then he says, beginning at John chapter 6, verse 35, Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. When you see that, what do you think they thought about it? Do you think they said, oh, he's not talking about something physical. He's not talking about the bread and the, lo the loaves and the fishes. He's, he's talking about the spiritual fill filling of, of our spirit so that we're not empty. No, no, they didn't get it because... We go to the end of the chapter of them still trying to make something physical out of something spiritual. But as I told you, those who have seen me, you have seen me, and still you do not believe. All those the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of all those he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, 
and I will raise them up at the last day. Now, did they get it? Did they understand? No, because even when I'm reading this, for I have come down from heaven. Now the subject that we're talking about is bread. What Jesus is talking as his illustration is bread. What do you think the Jews think when they says, I have come down from heaven? What came down from heaven? Man, they're still thinking something physical. And so Jesus' ministry is one of trying to get people off of this humanness, off of this physical stuff, and, and get to thinking spiritually. And he has a lot of trouble getting that done because they can't really conceive of the concept. So it's kind of a mix. You see the slide there, it's got the Bible and the bread. What struck your eye first when you saw the slide? The bread. Which one? <laughs> hey, you know, this, this is an aside. I saw a news article yesterday. The one on the left there, that's got the poppy seeds on it, you can fail a drug test if you eat that. I'm just saying. <laughs> so, if you are going to eat some of that, save a little bit of that if you get caught speeding or something. Just, just so you'll say, this is, this is what it was, all right? Just a preacher's society, okay? <laughs> But you see how the bread's so enticing and you can just almost taste it. And it's like, yeah, well, let me eat one of those rolls and then I'll open the Bible and see what's going on. Well, Jesus is trying to transition from them thinking about the, the food to thinking about the spiritual food to thinking about his word. Now, when he did this, and he tells them, For my Father's will is everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life and I will raise him up at the last day. Maybe it's starting to click. Maybe, maybe they're starting to get it, but they're still hungry. So they're still wanting some. Now we're going to go on to verse 41. and we'll start there. At this, the Jews began to grumble because, about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. What does that mean? When Jesus says, I'm the bread that came down from heaven, I came from my Father. Well, that just doesn't happen. For people who are here on earth, God is off in, in heaven somewhere, according to the, the, the thought that they were having at the time. And so when Jesus claims to be the Son of God, well, they're thinking, you're claiming to be God. And you're not, and that's blasphemy. And so that was a lot of the trouble that Jesus had throughout his ministry, was them not quite understanding that he came from the Father, that he was not the Father. They said, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I came down from heaven? Well, that's hard enough concept for us to understand. Jesus is God. Why was he born as a little baby? Well, he was born as a little baby to help people understand. If Jesus just appears somewhere, people would be afraid of him. But are you afraid of a little baby? Obviously not. <laughs> and, so, and so when we see Jesus come to that baby, he starts out so that the people can get adjusted to him, that they can better understand who he is as he, as it goes on. But the people are looking down and saying, he can't come down from heaven. We remember when he was born. So we don't understand. Verse 43, stop grumbling among yourselves, Jesus answered. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them, and I will raise them up at the last day. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them, and I will raise them up at the last day. We're going from a, 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 a thought pattern in religion at that time was this is the law. The Old Testament is the law. We follow the rules. When we follow the rules, then God will reward us. We don't ever really look at God. We don't ever look at personal relationship. We just follow the rules. So now Jesus is saying, look towards me. Listen to my words. And so it's a foreign concept, just as foreign as, as uh, 
as Jesus says, I'm the bread come down from heaven, and they're like, no, 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 bread is something you eat. It's as far a concept as, as, as remember, I, I threw in the woman at the well. The story about the woman at the well. When Jesus comes and, and says, says uh, would you like to have some of that water that you'll never thirst again? And she said, oh, yeah, give me some of that water. She's still thinking water. She's still not talking about the picture of what's going on. And so they're having a hard time. They are struggling here with who Jesus is. It is written in the prophets, they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard the Father and learned from him comes to me. No one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. Only he has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. The bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. So think about the statement that Jesus just made. He's gone from feeding the 5,000 to giving them what they want to giving them what they need. So not so much focus on not so much focus on what fills our stomachs as what fills our hearts, what fills our spirits. And they have a hard time with that. Sometimes we have a hard time with that. Sometimes we are looking at and our, our own physical needs, sometimes we're looking at, and there's nothing wrong with asking God for help, but we also, if we're asking for God to help us with some, some problem that we have, how does that fit into his plan? How does that fit into his kingdom? And when we do that, do we grow from it? And does the kingdom grow from that? I was uh, at a Kairos team meeting yesterday, and a good friend of mine, Ricky Simpson, about 10 years ago, he had a stroke. Life was going along pretty well for him. He was, he was, he'd been working Kairos ever since we started doing that in this area. And he had a stroke. He said he wasn't able to speak to start with. And I said, how recovered are you right now? And he said, well, I have a hard time with numbers right now. I have a hard time with, with uh, reading. But he said, I'd say about 92% recovered. But he began to tell about how God had worked in his life and how God had helped him and all the people that had come together to support him. Not because of what they were going to get out of it, but because they wanted to give from what had already been given to them. So, that last song. There's something in there about... Uh, what we've already received. You ever think about that? For those of us that believe in Jesus Christ, we've already been given the greatest gift that can possibly be. We've already been given the gift of eternal life. We've already been given victory over death. We've already been given that 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 hope that leads us through the, the dark valleys that we go through sometimes that leads us through times of tribulation with our heads up because we know who we belong to. Not that we don't struggle and not that we don't suffer and not that we're not sad and not that we don't have fears. But when we look beyond at what's been prepared for us already, then, then we can face that day with courage because we know whatever happens, we belong to God. Nobody said life as a Christian was easy. Mark was talking Thursday night. He said, you look at the followers of Jesus Christ, you look at the disciples, later apostles. He said, yep. If they were faithful to God, God would be faithful to them and they wouldn't have any troubles in this, in this world, in this life. And what happened? With bravery and with courage, most of them went to their death. 
because they had faith and trust that there was life after death. And that if the message was going to spread, it needed to spread through them. How many times do we have an opportunity to share? How many times do we have an opportunity to share what we've already been given? There's a video that was played yesterday. I don't know why I've done Kairos five times. They played this video, I've never seen it before. But then I also realized most of the stuff that happened yesterday, I didn't remember it happening before either. So, I don't know, I told them just to live with it. This is the way it's going to be. But the guy was, uh, had been in Attica prison, in Attica, New York. I don't know, maybe y'all have heard of that place. But compared to Attica, Bledsoe County is like Sunday school. And yet, he talked about his faith and the things that had happened to him and how Jesus came to him. And what he said was, the thing that struck me, he said, we have opportunities to share the love of Jesus Christ. Not next week, not next month, not next year, but in the next two seconds. We need to be thinking in the now about how we can touch somebody not about how we are going to get a plan of doing something next week, but who's the next person that you meet? And are you sharing the love of Jesus Christ with them? Not, do you believe in Jesus Christ? But hi, how are you doing? It's a good day to be in God's world. How many times do people say that to us? Hardly ever. But wouldn't that be a novel thing if we just started with something and we began to share the bread the hope that we have for our future, the enjoyment we have out of each day of our lives. Jesus has already given us the gift. He's already given us eternal life when we claim him as our Lord and Savior. We have everything that we need. And what do we do with it? What do we do with it? Do we keep it? Do we hide it? Or do we share it with the people around us? Not next week, not next month, not next year. But the next person you meet. Can you share the love of Jesus Christ with a smile on your face just to let them know that there's a little something different about us because we have the confidence of our own future. Let us pray. Lord, we take for granted what you do for us. We confess that we're not always openly thankful for what you do in our lives because of our humanness we always want more but you've given us everything help us to live with hearts of gratitude help us to live with hearts that are open to sharing the bread that you've given us for Lord we even know that the, the story of the loaves and fishes is, is not about having enough to go around, but it was about the abundance that was left over and people were willing to share. Help us to learn to share that more people can receive the bread, that more people can receive you. Remind us that you are the bread that came down from heaven, that you are our everything. In Jesus' name we ask this. Amen.